Welcome to Sam's Business Growth Show. I'm Sam Dunning, a digital marketing, sales, and business growth evangelist. Tune in and subscribe today as I'll be interviewing business leaders, experts, and entrepreneurs from around the globe. You'll be learning their story, how digital marketing has helped them along the way, and exclusive tips and insights to help you skyrocket your own business. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to a fresh episode of Sam's Business Growth Show. I'm excited today to be joined by the sales legend, Tony Hughes. Tony is the co-founder and sales innovation director over at Sales IQ Global. He's actually ranked as the third most influential person in the world on the topic of selling, according to LinkedIn. He's got 35 years experience in sales leadership. Um, he's a best-selling author, speaker, blogger, and sales leader. Tony, a very warm welcome, my friend. How are you doing? Thank you, Sam. I'm really well. So group greetings from Australia. Uh, it's our evening and it's your morning, I believe, there in the UK. But exactly really excited about being on the show. Yeah, bright and early here. And uh, I think you're just wrapping up your day there. So, um, yeah, looking forward to chatting today, Tony. So there's plenty of things that we want to discuss with your good self. Um, I think we're going to be talking kind of about what it takes to succeed in sales and perhaps a little bit about essential sales success for every business. Um, but before we get into that juicy stuff, um, Tony, for anyone that doesn't know Tony Hughes, uh, it'd be good to get a little bit of a snapshot on yourself, Tony. So perhaps you could give us a quick kind of five minute brief on your, your background, how you got into sales, how you got into business and um, just leading up to you starting off on your own. Yeah, so I think a lot of the people that are watching or listening to this are, are small business or medium sized business people themselves. In my early 20s, uh, I ran my own company and uh, sold it in Australia and we took it to the USA. So at 25 years of age, I was in America starting a business um, and I learned a big lesson in the States. And that was if you can't personally sell and market, uh, you're not gonna do that well in business. Uh, when I came back to Australia, we were getting royalties for 12 years and I had a non-compete in that industry. So I decided I needed to go and learn how to sell and ended up really f falling in love with selling. I just thought, wow, you can make amazing money have huge levels of freedom. And I guess at the heart of selling in my mind, it's really about making a positive difference in the lives of others, you know, your clients, both personally and professionally. And for any business owner, that's what's got to be at the heart of what we do. If we don't solve a serious business problem, uh, then there's not going to be any serious revenue for us in helping clients. And uh, I had a career in selling, kept getting promoted, uh, ended up running the Asia Pacific region for North American multinationals uh, before I left the corporate world about eight years ago. And I've gone out on my own on the back of uh, a number of best-selling books. And I do consulting for organizations such as Salesforce uh, and other organizations around the world, um, helping them be more successful in how they sell. Fantastic, man. Awesome. So let's, um, let's jump straight into it. And I'm sure there's a lot of sales professionals listening, perhaps marketers and business owners alike that are keen to, to learn from yourself to get some of the tips. And like you just mentioned, Tony, even if you don't think you're in sales, if you run a business, then you are really. You, you've got to be selling. You've got to, got, to, got, the cash, got to have the cash coming in. You've got to have the, the revenue to keep things afloat and to keep things profitable. So um, perhaps we could, we could start from, from the bottom, really, and talk about some fundamentals in terms of what it takes to actually succeed in sales, perhaps talk about some of the mindset um, that's, that's part of it, and then maybe move on to things like processes in terms of having a, a sales process, how we can reach out to new clients and, and different strategies? Yes. Uh, well, to me, it all begins with product market fit. You know, so whether you're uh, an entrepreneur, uh, a business person, a marketer or a salesperson, uh, the big thing we need to recognize is that all of the world uh, is not a prospect or a happy hunting ground for us. <laughs> um, we, need, we need to really think about product market fit uh, and the reason it's so important is because uh, time is really the limited resource that we're dealing with. There is no shortage of opportunity in the marketplace, but there is a limited number of hours that we can apply, you know, our uh, precious time and expensive resources to opportunity pursuit. So the very first thing everybody should do, whether you're a new salesperson into a role or thinking about starting your own business as an entrepreneur or how do I market something or scale my business, think about product market fit. So what problem do we really solve 
that uh, has a strong business case in behind it for making the investment? You know, what's the commercial value of working with us? And if what we provide is really just a nice to have, we're going to struggle. You know, so, um, you know, rather than being a vitamin tablet, we need to be, if you want to think of it in those terms, um, a headache tablet, you know, is the sure. thing that's really important. So, so think about product market fit, be brutally honest with yourself about those realities. And then as you do that, you need to build out ideal customer profiles. So okay. you may sell to a number of different verticals, but what I call an ICP is critical. Got it. Okay. So firstly, work out the problem you solve and then work out your ideal customer. So is there any tips you can share with us, Tony, on making sure that your, the problem you solve is actually something that's worth solving? So should we, before we kind of jump into starting a business model or something like that, should we be actually testing it out? Uh, should we actually be kind of doing trials with potential customers and making sure they're actually happy with what we do and it's actually something that's worth selling, something that's going to generate a profit? Or is there any other recommendations that you'd suggest for that side of things? The really interesting thing about this is people will have just heard what I said and in their own minds they'll go, yeah, I understand that. You know, we've got yeah. good product market fit. Let's move yeah. on. But I've got to tell you, most people live in a deluded fool's paradise. When I say to people, show me your ICP, have you documented it? Um, and they go, yeah, and I go, well, show it to me. And they either don't have it uh, or it's rubbish. Mm. But ICP is really important because you think about um, firmographics, technographics, and psychographics. You know, you go beyond just um, geographic locations, size of organization, industry vertical. But you really start to think about, you know, what, what are the attributes of an organization that constitutes an ideal fit and a higher propensity or probability for them to buy? So people think they know this. They think it's in their head. You ask them to write it up on a whiteboard or get it in a the document. They really struggle. So actually do it is really my advice. Pe people think they know this. And then once you've done your ICP, you've documented it. Um, uh, and the sales IQ platform that uh, I'm part of now, we've got we've got good templates for this. But once you've done that, you then move into thinking about your ideal customer profiles, because within those um, uh, ideal customers, you then need to identify the people that you need to engage with for either decision making uh, or for influence and consensus. Because the world we live in today is that our leaders want want buy-in and consensus from people in their team before they'll make a decision. Uh, even from a change management point of view, you know, that's a smart thing to do. But if we don't understand the different buyer personas, you know, maybe we sell to the CFO, maybe it's the head of ops, maybe it's IT, maybe mm. it's HR or finance. They all care about different things in the organization and, and our product will have different outcomes for them based on their role. So it's really important we understand the people we're selling to, how they're gold in their role, what, what really matters, um, what, what their typical um, strategies are to be successful, because then we can talk their language. Got it, Tony. So if I give you a, a quick example, so here at WebChoice, we're a digital marketing company. We typically sell to kind of small to medium sized businesses with the odd, odd larger company. Often we're, we're dealing with kind of marketing directors. Sometimes it is the business owner if they're a small company and there's only a few employees. And then for kind of higher level, kind of more enterprise operations, it might be that we start dealing with the marketing manager, they'll bring in the marketing director, then over time they might bring in the chief technical officer, then chief revenue officer, and so so on, as you know, when, it, when you're dealing with kind of larger sales cycles. For people that have just started out, should they go to the top top first, Tony? So should they go straight to the, to the top level DM, so the CEO, and kind of see see how uh, their pitch gets gets received? or? Should they be a bit more tactical about it and perhaps reach out to kind of mid-level decision makers, be it marketing managers or sales managers or things like that? Or is there a process to, to doing that? The real trap for anybody selling, you know, whether you're the business owner trying to make a sale or you're a salesperson, the real trap is that the way we're wired as humans is we, we fear botching the conversation. Uh, we fear rejection. Uh, we get nervous, we get sweaty palms <laughs> whenever we have yeah. to do any form of outreach. We, sure. tend to want to, we tend to want to treat the phone like it's covered in spiders um, and just instead, you know, send emails and, and LinkedIn connection requests or messages to people because you think, well, at least I can endlessly polish my message and I'm not going to get rejected. All of that's a mistake. Uh, we need to get back on the phone. 
and the other thing is we tend to call into the level where we feel most comfortable, you know, that we could carry the conversation. Ah, okay. The reality is that's a mistake. We need to take a courage pill uh, and call into the highest practical level. And again, if we've nailed our ICP and we understand buyer personas, for example, I'm calling into the CEO uh, of manufacturing or I'm calling into the CEO uh, of retail, you know, because they care about different things. Um, we'll then be equipped to have the conversation. And if we can evidence the positive results we've provided uh, to others like them, uh, then we'll be more confident. So the thing is going as high as you can. But the other piece, uh, as strange as this may sound, is go at everybody at the same time before right. someone tries to block you. Because the problem is if you go in at a lower level, uh, often people start to say, well, look, just send me the information. I'll send it up the line. Don't talk to anybody else. Uh, and whether people are uh, inept, incompetent, uh, lying, uh, whether they overrate, you know, their own level of influence in their organization, who knows? But if you allow someone in the customer's organization uh, to do your selling for you, uh, in my view, in my view, you're in deep trouble. So you need to co-create a vision for a brighter future with the client and then co-create the business case that underpin that underpins the investment to work with you because in essence the mindset you need is i'm not going to ask you to, to to come up with money to work with us i'm going to work with you to show you how this self funds working with us will fund itself let's co-create the business case and take that to the ceo or the board or the cfo wh whoever that happens to be so go at everybody at the same time Talk the language of all of those individuals by knowing your buyer persona. So t tailor the messaging for each. Set a vision for a for a better state of affairs in their business, and then co-create the business case. Help the leader gather consensus, and then go back to the leader. Got it. And are these very time-consuming activities, Tony? So we, let's say we've worked out our ideal customer profile, our persona, who we want to actually target. We've worked out the problem that we solve, um, and we've had a look at our messaging. How much time realistically? should we as business owners or sales professionals be spending once we've got this information or our company's given us this information to actually then be, let's say, building lists or building people that fall within these personas to go and target? Should it just be a few minutes each day or should it be something that takes perhaps longer? Yeah, so I'll just talk in the, in the first instance about the time investment of building all of those things, you know, ICP, buy personas and also narrative or messaging. We need to nail our messaging. Sure. It amazes me how many people botch the conversation because the message is all about them them and their product. It's not yeah. all about the customer. I think we all get about 10 messages on LinkedIn a day. Oh, we do. We do. No. <laughs> so let's, I've, yeah, got, let's... I've got, uh, I think, 340,000 people that are, that are connected to me, follow me, connected to me on LinkedIn, and I just get bombarded. Yeah. I, get, I get people sending me spam, you know, inside LinkedIn, uh, offering to generate leads for my plumbing business. Oh, there now, you go. I don't, I don't own a plumbing <laughs> business. <laughs> I've had people offer, offer to, you know, get um, uh, patients for me as a dentist. You know, I'm not a dentist. They're obviously paying some marketing agency uh, uh, a lot and just wasting their money. So, so the thing is, uh, as a, as an entrepreneurial business person, don't start hiring sales and marketing people or throwing money at sales and marketing if you have not first earned the right by understanding product market fit, ICP, buyer personas, and the messaging. Right, you're now in a position to execute. Now, once you've done that, for someone who's a full-time seller, uh, every day they need to have both oars in the water. One oar is creating opportunity pipeline, and the other oar is progressing and closing deals. So again, it, it, it depends on each business, but for a seller, if you're not spending at least a third of your time each day on actual prospecting, not dreaming about prospecting, not thinking about prospecting, not wishing that you'd done some more prospecting, not endlessly, you know, narcissistically gazing, you know, at yourself in LinkedIn uh, or going down the rabbit hole of research. I'm you definitely know, so good yes, with that. Yes, you know, yes, we need to research, but we need to actually do. So there's a lot of talking about prospecting and driving outbound in organisations, but there's very little doing is what I find. The, what the research says is the average seller only spends about a third of their time actually selling. I think that's bang on. I think that's bang on. I think we're all guilty. I know I am as well 
of uh, having the old LinkedIn tab, you see a notification pop and then that just brings you down the rabbit hole. You're scrolling for about half an hour and I've completely forgotten the task I was doing. So yeah, definitely get rid of that, Tony. So a third of the day prospecting, that's interesting. Um, but it kind of makes sense, especially from a sales perspective. I suppose as business owners, there's a lot of tasks you've got to juggle, but if you're purely sales, then that, that makes sense to me. Okay, so we've nailed down um, all that kind of things. We've done the background work. We've started prospecting. Um, what are the best ways to do it, Tony? What are some of the channels that you recommend that we actually reach out to our ideal customers on and um, start kind of putting out our message start booking demos or start booking consultations or meetings or whatever the end goal is where we want to sit down either via Zoom, Skype or even face to face with our ideal customers. Yeah, so everything I've been talking about is really in the context of business to business selling, not not B, not B to C. So this is business yep. to business. Um, when it comes to the best way to drive outreach, and I know this is a shameless, you know, self self promotion, but um, my book combo prospecting explains all of this you can get it on audible it, it's it's actually narrated by a great guy out of the uk okay um, so, so so the whole principle of combo prospecting is we need to pattern interrupt the way that potential clients people who don't know us yet we need to pattern interrupt the way that they just ignore all strangers and anybody trying to sell or market to them mm. and the way you pattern interrupt is you use combinations of channels concurrently so you phone them and when you phone them their, their phone will ring and they'll, they'll they'll have a look at their smartphone and go this person is not in my address book they're not in my contacts don't know who it is i'm not going to take it that's normal so they'll just they'll, they'll dump the call and they'll go back to looking at their email messages or their email especially if you call on the shoulders of the day which is the best time to be driving outreach right before and after people get buried in meetings now knowing covid there's not as much commuting, but the world will return to normal, you know, at some stage. And the shoulders of the day is the highest open rates as a marketer. You, you know, you'd obviously know this, Sam, for email, but it's the highest uh, time you get engagement. So you phone, it goes to voicemail, you leave a voicemail. Hey, Sam, it's Tony from Sales IQ. Uh, looking to get 15 minutes in your calendar. I'll, I'll shoot you an email. That's it. I don't. I don't give my value narrative, my my whole whole value prop elevator pitch. I just do that, okay. and then I email you. I email you, and that all happens within ninety seconds. So what happens is your 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 pocket device rings, beeps, and buzzes all within ninety seconds, and it's me. And what that does is it drives up the open rates on the emails enormously, and that's what what I call a triple phone, voicemail, email is a basic triple. And you're not doing effective outreach unless you triple somebody, because otherwise you're not pattern interrupting. If you just if you just do mass mail merged email and think, and then I'll then I'll phone them all, you know, in the next two days, there's too much of a gap between the touches, and you're not pattern interrupting. Each one of those things individually just gets ignored. And if you want to up your game and make it a quad, you know, you would text them. If you want to make it a pent, you text them and WhatsApp them. You'd email them. You'd send them. You'd send them a fax. You LinkedIn know, message. Yeah, you'd you'd deploy a carrier pigeon. You know, like <laughs> you know what what you, you you would have a hand delivered letter to turn up at their office, right? So Got the it. whole idea is you don't know which which are the preferred channels of communication of a potential client whom you don't yet know. So just try every channel until they self identify. You know what their preferred communication is, and so long as your message is relentlessly about them and not you and their opportunity to improve results in their role. And you can evidence what you're claiming and really back it up with some insights about what others who are not direct competitors, because that's a betrayal of trade secrets. Yeah. As long as you can evidence and tell some interesting true stories that really help set that vision, there's a lot of value for that person in that conversation, whether they bought anything from you or not. And the way you need to feel is I believe in the value that I, that I provide people uh, and uh, you need to give me a valid no or give me engagement, right? I'm not going away, right? So respond to me. Awesome, awesome. I talked to some of this stuff about your, your co-founder, Luigi, uh, a few weeks back when he was on the show, and uh, I, love, I love that response. I'm not going away unless you, you give me a no. Or, That's uh, right. Or, uh, it needs to be a valid no, right? But, but the truth is time is the precious resource, right? So... Mm. You know, if you, for example, sold Salesforce software 
and you called a prospect and they said, hey, we just signed, you know, four months ago, a five-year contract with Microsoft to implement Microsoft Dynamics, that's a real no. I mean, like what you do is you'd update your own CRM to say we need to be talking to this company in about three and a half, four years, you know, well before their current contract expires, right? But they're not in a position to buy. So a real no is wonderful. It liberates your time. You, you know, you stop getting frustrated and wasting your time and you, you'd stop annoying them. Definitely. And we talk about that a lot. And that's something I was guilty of in my early days, kind of trying to avoid the no, when really it's it's one of the best things you can hear because it means you don't have to waste your time with them anymore. You can say, look, maybe reach out to them in six months, 12 months, whenever their contract's up for renewal, move on to the next prospect or do do the other job you had pinned down for your day. So it's, yeah, it's a great point. And I love some of the, the points you've just raised there, Tony, in terms of combo prospecting, in terms of the 90 seconds and doing the phone, doing the voicemail, doing the email. So they're, they're gonna get your message. Um, and I guess that means if you reach out again, then they've kind of got an idea who you are because they're like, no one ever does this. So I actually remember this person's name, I remember their company. And it's, it's gonna send send alarm bells in their head when you reach out to them again. If, um, if, they, if there is no response after the first kind of 90 second combination with the phone, email and voicemail, is there a next step, Tony? Yes. So the next thing to really think about is that most sellers and business people make the mistake of thinking that if someone doesn't reply, then they're rejecting me. They mustn't, they mustn't be interested. Right. And the truth is often the reason people don't get back to us is just because they're busy. Um, if I shared my screen with you now, as insane as this sounds, you'd see that I have more than 19 and a half thousand unread emails in my inbox. Oh, wow. Um, if we had a look in LinkedIn, it's chaos. And when I don't get back to people, um, and by the way, I actively skim to delete and ignore anything that's from someone I don't know, or I think they're marketing or selling to me, and I get a lot of it, right? So I do what our, you know, our potential buyers do, but often people that I want to get back to, I just miss it, or I look at the email, I think, oh, when I get off this next call, I'll do that. Um, but the problem is I, I often forget because I'm just getting drowned, absolutely drowned in a torrent of, of outreach from people to me. So if I don't respond, it's not because I'm not interested. It's often because I just forgot or I'm busy and I'll get back and apologize. But many people would misinterpret me not getting back to them and think, oh, he must not want to help or he mustn't be interested. So, so the next thing we do is um, depending on the seniority, so the more junior they are, the higher the frequency or the, you know, the, the tighter compressed that the cadence is of outreach, okay. you're driving the sequence, the more senior, the less frequent. But if, if they're mid-level, it'd be three days later, three business days later, you'd go again. So what you do is you would phone to go to voicemail and you say, uh, hey, hey, uh, Sam, uh, I'm still looking to get 15 minutes with you. I'll send you a calendar invite. Right. And then then you'd simply hit reply all on your email and just put and in the header. You just add thoughts, question mark, and then you'd send a calendar invite and then you would send a text message. How's Thursday 215? Sam or Tony, sorry. And, and you would just go ahead and send it. Now, I know this sounds very forward, but senior people have got this habit of just accepting calendar invites because the only people that send them to them are people who belong in their calendar. <laughs> so, you know, and it's not like you're doing that as a first touch, you know, where it's a bit inappropriate, sure. right? This is now the second round of communication. You've signaled that you're going to send a calendar invite and I would just do that. And then, you know, four or five days later, if they don't respond to any of that, uh, then you hit reply again, you know, your phone, you hit reply again to that email thread. Uh, you send another calendar invite. You just you just keep upping your game. You 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 want to send the message to them. Holy hell, you know, like my phone's going to melt down with this person. Like you know, I need to get back to him or her. Right? They're clearly not going to give up. Right? And if your message is all about you and what you sell, you're in trouble because you're being you're upping your persistence, and they don't think it's relevant to them. But if your message is about them and improving results in their role, and you have some genuine insights, there's value in the conversation. Even if they never buy, that's the thing we've got to figure out as salespeople. How do we do that piece? Yep. Then upping our game is all okay. 
So to that point, to dive in a bit deeper, Tony, like you say, myself and I'm sure you with hundreds of thousands of connections on LinkedIn, you must get hounded with people. Uh, LinkedIn spam, all these messages, just constantly talking about themselves, their product, and it, it does our head in. Um, it's just no value at all. So this could be really valuable. So how can we actually tailor our message? Perhaps you could give us a rough template, be it an email, be it a, a, a cold call, be it a rough um, text message, to actually tailor your messaging to be about your prospects. So is there a, is there a rough kind of guideline yeah, that we can follow <laughs> to make it so our prospects actually care what we're talking about rather than just us, another salesperson talking about the product, delete. Okay, so so let me talk about these frameworks. So so when you run outreach, when when you call somebody, there's, there's, there's six elements that are grouped into, into three main pieces. So the first thing is uh, you need to introduce yourself and provide context for the conversation. So you introduce yourself super briefly. You know, hey, Sam, it's Tony from Sales IQ. Uh, I, I noticed, and now you need to provide some personalization. And there's three types of personalization. Okay. So the, be the best type of personalization is a common relationship that recommended that I call, right? So an active, trusted relationship referral. That's the most powerful. The, the next best thing is to reference a trigger event that is highly relevant to that person. Don't make it COVID, right? That's worn out, tired, like a relevant, a relevant trigger event. Um, hey, Mark, I noticed you just launched the new Jabadoo product, you know, uh, that you're yeah. pushing into North America with. Um, the reason for the call, right? So, so introduce yourself and warm the call with some personalization. That's the first phase. Now we're going to move into steps three and four, which is the, the second main piece. So, hey, the, the reason for the call is I've got some ideas on how I think you could, and in a way that, have you got just 15 minutes now or when can we find 20 minutes later in the week? Now, the the, the two pieces that you insert into that is, in essence, a double-edged benefit statement or a double-edged value narrative, right? So if someone wanted to get to me, they'd, they'd call me up, uh, hey, hey, Tony, um, uh, Sam from the Business Growth Show, actually suggest that I give you a call. Um, uh, and I, I noticed, I actually read that article where you nearly dropped dead with a 99% heart blockage not that long ago. Um, hey, the reason for the call is I've got some ideas on how you could actually monetize your combo prospecting book and ideas and in a way where you get time back, right? So you're not putting all that time and traveling to actually make the money. Have you got just 15 minutes now? Or when can we find 20 minutes later in the week? Right, so, so that's an example of doing this because the thing is, well, I want to monetize combo prospecting. I'd love to do it in a way where I get away from all of the time and travel to make the money. I, and the person's shown me they've done some research by referencing the article I published about me nearly dropping dead about 18 months ago. So, and, and, then, I, and then I would typically say, well, uh, yes, potentially, how would I do that? Or can you tell me a bit more? Right, mm -hmm. and then you're ready to go to the next level of information. This is step four, right? So step three is I've got some ideas on how you could, and in a way that, have you got 15 minutes? Then the next piece is they'll naturally ask, well, can you tell me more? Sure. You know, it's around you being able to get your concepts online and make money while you're asleep. Do you mind if I ask, right? And now we move into the end. <laughs> do, do, do you mind if I ask? And then you have questions ready to go. Do you mind if I ask, you know? what are you doing right now to monetize your IP without having to put in all of the time and travel? You know, I know it's a bit forward, Tony, but look, how much of your revenue mix is coming from, from, from passive channels, you know, like book sales or monetizing your IP online. You know, I know you've got a couple of books out, but how much of your overall revenue is, you know, is from that, right? So, so then you ask some questions. So that's the basic framework, right? So, and, and what you need is a core hypothesis of value based on a buyer persona. So if someone sold an e-learning platform and they thought my ICP is all of the people in the world that are those jacked up, want to be self-proclaimed gurus, you know, that speak at conferences and publish books and run seminars, they've all got IP. They all really own a job so they don't turn up and speak or teach or train. They don't make any money. I'm going to help them, you know, generate passive online income by getting their IP online into e-learning courses. So if that's your model, you go and find the hundreds of us around the world in LinkedIn. You've got your core narrative and all you need is a little bit of personalization at the front and you're away. It's really quick and efficient. Love it. Love it. So if just, just to briefly recap on that, Tony, um, 
so essentially does it and before we go into it does it matter the channel or is this this applicable channel wide really whether it's an email whether it's a linkedin phone message, it's a phone, 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 cool. phone phone so 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 because so many sellers have stopped calling you know they've 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 drunk the social selling schlock you know the lie that no one Daniel answered. Disney's not tuning in yeah, well, I'm, me, me and Dan have had some big debates, right? Now, Dan, Dan's masterful at self-promotion and, and creating controversy for following. I really like Dan, right? It's all awesome. Sure. But if you but if you got Dan in an English pub, you know, after a few beers and stuck your finger in his chest, or if I did, well, I that. <laughs> right, I, like you'd end up having quite, quite a real conversation. Salespeople that abandon the phone are committing career suicide. We need to get back on the phone. We need to use all of the channels. Right, the phone was the original social selling tool. People's um, smart devices are, are phones, right? So it's the phone, it's text, it's WhatsApp, it's LinkedIn, it's Twitter direct messages. Like it's all of the channels, right? It's all of the channels. Love it, love it. Okay, so quick, quickly recap. You've got that intro. So just perhaps give your name. So hi, it's Sam over at Web Choice. Tony loved your article, or maybe loved your recent video. Um, where you talked about how how he nearly died and how he worked that into combo prospecting and there's some really interesting points and it helped me personally to, to up my sales game to the next level um, the reason i'm calling is because i think we could actually help you monetize combo prospecting as you talked about in this article i've got an unusual strategy that you might be interested in have you got 15 minutes in your calendar next next tuesday at 2 30 or maybe next wednesday at 4 30 what do you think um now i noticed so they might say yes or no at this stage i'll notice you started raising further questions or or the salesperson started raising further questions. So are we trying to turn that into a discovery or are we trying to keep our discovery cool for the next 15 minutes? Well, the, well, the really interesting thing was is pre-COVID, you know, what we wanted to do was to go get on site. You know, we wanted to go and have a meeting with people. And that depends on what you sell. But if what you sell is a big ticket item, you know, you want to get in front of them, you want to create emotional connection, do discovery, meet other people. We try and do all of that. The reality now is we're not going to get on site. So if you get them on the phone, let's have the initial conversation now. Let's have that so that discovery and qualification call now. Um, and Sam, I really thought that you nailed that narrative. So like you're the world's best student. That was fantastic. You know, <laughs> my 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 only coaching in the way that you just did that is, is don't say I've got some ideas on how we can do this for you. Always make them the hero. Hey, I've got some ideas on how I think you could, on how you could drive more revenue you know, without having to turn up. So resist the temptation to talk about ourselves. I, I wouldn't give them the alternative choice close in time because it just paints us as a seller. You know, it's okay these days to let the person have a bit of control. So just say, hey, have, have you got just 15 minutes now? Or, you know, when could we find 20 minutes later in the week? The reason I use that phrasing is at a subliminal level, you're sending the message. It's easier for you to deal with me now <laughs> than then put it off for later in the week. You know, it's less time if we just have this quick conversation now. And then um, and, if, and if they go, sure, you know, you, you say, great, well, look, it's really around a strategy of you being able to. So talk about the underpinning strategy to get the result without talking about your product. You don't say, oh, it's about our market-leading, award-winning, world's best practice e-learning platform. You don't say that. Hey, it's around a strategy of you getting your content online so you can monetize it while you're asleep. Do you mind if I ask? Right? and then have some questions to go. And again, most sellers go, yeah, look, I understand all of that. You know, and then you hear them ask their question. Oh, so Tony is generating, you know, other other lines of income important to you. What a stupid, manipulative, closed question, right? So people, people don't nail their questions, right? So you need to get the other person talking about something that leads to the value we provide. Talk about something that helps them come to their own conclusion that they need to look at this. Because people are best motivated for reasons they discover. They're not motivated by things we tell them. They don't remember things we tell them, but they'll remember and be motivated by an epiphany that they had in the conversation. So if you yep. if someone asked me, hey, Satoni, how much of your current revenue is is 100% passive where you don't actually have to do anything for it? You know, what's what's your plan to get more of your revenue mix to where you don't have to turn up? And that gets me thinking, do you know what? I need a plan to get more of my revenue coming in that's passive, <laughs> right? So, so you need to strut. Now, they're not. It's not about being manipulative. It's have questions that lead to the value that we can provide. Yeah, and I think it also brings us back to personalization as well. From what you said, Tony, as like you say, too, too far too many messages are just generic copy and paste. When it only takes a couple of minutes to look at someone's LinkedIn profile or check out their website or look at their blog, get some content that's probably quite important. Something that they've recently talked about that's going to 
ring alarm bells in their head and they're going to know you've actually taken the effort to research them and then it's it's going to strive for a better conversation so yeah that will, that will make that's sense great advice sam for everyone listening to this that is great advice from sam that's excellent cool okay awesome so we've we've covered it nearly all now we've, we've talked about working out your idle customer how to set up a, a framework for how to actually reach out to them we've talked about how to prospect we talked about how to actually get the meetings booked in um Perhaps we should talk about the actual meeting itself or the demo itself um, before we wrap things up. So is, is there any tips you've got once we've actually got this 15 minute, this 20 minute demo or the presentation or whatever format our business likes to showcase our wares? Are there yeah. any top tips for, for, for making best use of our time, the prospect's time and kind of bringing the business in or taking it to the next step depending on our sales cycle? Yeah, so we, we need clarity about how we are seeking to create progression now, the worst thing in the world is to have a meeting that we feel was great, but it did not result in the customer committing to do something at the end of it. So just remember, it's never a good meeting unless the customer is doing something for us at the end. Um, so a lot of sellers use different frameworks for qualification. The most well-known one in the world is BANT. You know, does the person have budget authority? Is there a genuine need? And do they have a timeline to do something? Uh, there's medic, they, like there's all of these frameworks but in my view, buyers don't like being qualified. They don't like the Spanish inquisition of questions. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to get ourselves on their side of the table, metaphorically, if it's a digital meeting, to explore the business case for change. You know, is there enough commercial value here to warrant change? And if that's your ethos, I'm just trying to understand whether it would make sense for you to even be looking at this. So when a lead comes to us, we should always be asking, hey, what's happened inside your organization? that's caused you to want to look at this. Don't say, you know, to look at our award-winning solution. Just, hey, what's happened that's caused you to want to look at this? If the business was to make any changes in this area, regardless of who you went with us or somebody else, what improved results would the business expect? And also for you and your role, and where do you see the risks? So those types of conversations, the degree to which the person engages with you in that conversation and shares information, and also access to other people in their team. That's the degree to which it's a well-qualified opportunity and you have a higher probability of winning. So we need two, we need a two-way dance with people. The other thing I'll finish on, Sam, if I can, is um, sure. a lot of the selling today is not on site, it's remote. And it absolutely amazes me how many sellers and business people just do not have basic TQ. You know, we know that we need IQ and EQ in business. But we need technical question today. We need to know how to use the technology and tools. And the most basic things where they'll they'll be running an online meeting on Zoom or a platform like that, and the laptop's down way below their head height, you know, and the person on the other side's looking up their nostrils and at their double chin and at the fan and the ceiling. Uh, they've got a bright window behind them, you know, with bright light. So their face is almost unrecognizable because of contrast problems. They've got a crappy microphone in their horrible PC where it's all distorted and horrible. Um, so things like get your laptop up to eye height, stand up like I'm doing right now to lift my energy, get your lighting sorted out, get a professional microphone, learn how to use tools like Zoom, know how to go in, in, into gallery view. If you're presenting, come in and out of your slides, ask people to turn their camera on. We need to find a way to create engagement uh, to use human empathy uh, as a way of building connection with the client rather than have a monologue. So my last piece of advice is invest in becoming a masterful digital seller or, or, or business person because uh, one thing that's going on right now is that even post-COVID when things come back to a semblance of normal, every business in the world has thought, Do you know what? Uh, I don't need to have as many salespeople visiting our office. You know, I can deal with all of this with far less time and hassle. They're all going to push a lot more online engagement and we won't get to get on site with people until we're far deeper into the sales process or funnel. So learn how to do digital, digital selling really well. I'm co-authoring my new book, which is called uh, Tech Powered Sales. And we talk a lot about this. Uh, we're, in, we're in the middle right now of the fourth industrial revolution uh, and the world is changing enormously. Awesome, Tony. There's some great tips because there's nothing worse than having a Zoom call with, with someone and you can barely see them. It's dark as anything or their, their microphone's terrible. Like you say, it's coming from a laptop and it's just an absolute shambles. You can not really understand what's going on. It's just, yeah, just simple stuff. 
And like you say, it's, it's, it's not very expensive. You can get a microphone, you can get a decent webcam, you can get some lights fairly cost effectively. To wrap things up, Tony, we like to, to always ask, um, I know you guys are, are keen on outbound, a lot of your approaches outbound. For businesses that are utilizing digital marketing, are there any digital marketing channels you specifically recommend that have worked for your business over at Sales IQ that have helped you guys get more inbound that you recommend to any business owners tuning in um, as a digital channel of choice or choices? Yeah, so so the key is go and be where your customers are. You know, that's the first thing. So maybe your customers in Facebook are in Facebook or they're in LinkedIn. Uh, email is still highly valid. The thing we the thing we know today with marketing. So he, here's my tips on outbound marketing. If you're driving outbound to create inbound, if that's what your strategy is, and that's a valid strategy, the key to effective outbound first is all of the things we've talked about. Know your ICP, buy personas, be on point, a message that's about them. But once you've got that nailed, the, the key things are this, brevity. You need to be brief. The emails you send, people go, you've got to be kidding me. Like, are you for real? But I promise you this works. It's what we need to do. Emails need to be three sentences, not three paragraphs, just three sentences. The header needs to be one or two words, you know. It needs to get rid of all of the cheesy marketing spambulum, you know optimizing your outcomes in 2020 you know like the moment you put COVID in the heading of anything you're dead right instant so delete. right it's just all instant delete and then the other thing i'd just say is we all know that personalization is the holy grail of marketing we all know that it's the personal the personalization of all outbound is the holy grail everyone's having a go and almost nobody is doing it well the the, the amount of automated rubbish you know, we, I, I get emails all the time. You know, hey, Tony, I, I noticed that we're both based in Sydney. Would it make sense to catch up for a coffee? I'm thinking, man, there's five, there's five and a half, six million people live in Sydney. The, because we both live in the same city is not the reason for a coffee. But that's, that's not relevant, right? Um, so companies are trying to pull an attribute to put into personalization, but it often misses the mark. So as a seller... The human level, as Sam talked about, that quick pragmatic research for you to add the human element, inject the human element of personalization uh, is, is really key. So yes, drive outbound, but you've got to avoid the spam filters, turn all the HTML off, don't add images until you're into your probably third email, you know, exchange with somebody. All the initial stuff's got to be short. It's got to be simple. You've got to find a way to punch through. Tony, love it. Thoroughly enjoyed our talk. Everyone, you've been tuning into Sam's Business Growth Show, where we sit down with business leaders, experts, and entrepreneurs from around the globe. We find out their story, how marketing's helped along the way, and their exclusive tips and insights to help you skyrocket your sales and skyrocket your business. Tony, if you could thank just one person, either dead or alive, having a positive influence on yourself and your career, who would that be and why? Uh, it would be my dad, you know, who's passed away, but I remember my dad late one night said to me uh, he said son all you need to make it in life is uh one person who'll believe in you uh and that and that's very true excellent man good stuff uh tony tell us a bit more about your books the best way people can learn from you connect with you and get in touch if they wish to yeah so obviously connect with me in linkedin so just search tony hughes in linkedin uh, my latest book is called Combo Prospecting. You'll find it in, you know, all of the normal ways of buying uh, audio books, e-books and paperback books. Uh, and please keep an eye out for Tech Powered Sales that's being published mid next year. Um, and obviously you can find my concepts if you want to get trained on all of these things uh, on the Sales IQ platform. Excellent, man. And if you've enjoyed the, sh the show, you can subscribe to Sam's Business Growth Show. We have three fresh episodes with business leaders each and every week. And there's tons of other episodes for you to check out on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Tony, thanks so much for coming on, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Sam. Thank you for having me. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Cheers. Are you tired of constantly hunting for new customers? You could be missing out on regular inbound opportunities, all because your website isn't on the first page of Google. Perhaps you're already spending lots of money on advertising, but your website is failing to convert all of your hard-earned visitors into a consistent flow of new customers. If you'd like to learn more about our unusual approach that brings idle clients straight to you, connect with Sam Dunning on LinkedIn or book a free 20-minute consultation via webchoiceuk.com. That's webchoiceuk.com. Subscribe today for more digital marketing, sales, and business growth tips from the experts.